Greetings. My name is Melvin Jones and I am the ministering evangelist of the Southwest Church of Christ located at 380 Franklin Avenue in Hartford, Connecticut. And I'd like to welcome you all to our YouTube channel. And I pray that this message will enrich your life and cause you to make a radical change for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanks again for tuning in and may God bless you all. Amen. God's people said amen again. Amen. Oh, indeed, we are blessed beyond measure to be in the presence of greatness. Church, I'm here to tell you that we serve a mighty good God. Amen. He is so good to us in spite of us. And for that, we all praise his name. Amen. So good to see you all today, all of our visitors and guests that have come for the express purpose of worshiping God in spirit and in truth. I want to personally thank all of the saints that prayed for me and my family. Uh, most of you know that my grandmother passed and I had to go to South Carolina and I had to eulogize my grandmother's funeral. And that was one of the most difficult things I've ever done, but God is a mighty good God and he sought me through. And we're grateful that we had the opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those in the state of South Carolina. Appreciate brother priesters and all the brothers that preach and teach while I'm gone. Certainly appreciate them daily and never take your service and your abilities uh, for granted. Keep me out in your prayers. She's out in California with Cadesi, so keep her in your prayers. And keep everybody in prayer because this is the 4th of July weekend and people are on planes, trains, and automobiles at the beach enjoying chicken. Enjoying each other's company, family, and friends on this weekend that we call the 4th of July. Independence Day, which is referred to as the 4th of July. This federal holiday in the United States, it commemorates the adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. Now, the Continental Congress, they declared uh, that the 13th American, the 13 American colonies regarded themselves as a new nation, as the United States of America, and they were no longer under the rule of the British Empire, and so they declared themselves free from Great Britain. However, Great Britain just didn't give the U.S. this liberty just because they asked for it. They had to fight for their freedom. Amen? Amen. They had to fight for their freedom, and throughout the years, Throughout the years, there's just been tons of people that had to fight for their freedom. Thomas L. Jennings, he was born a free man in 1791 in New Jersey. And he was the first protester that walked around with a sign in front of other slaves saying, we are men, we are brothers. Henry Turner, a black legislator who was denied his seat upon election. He made a six hour speech declaring whose legislation is this anyways. Gandhi was a nonviolent freedom fighter that united India in the struggle of independence. Nelson Mandela, Hale Selassie, Martin Luther King Jr., Frederick Douglass, and the list goes on and on for those that had to fight for freedom. A freedom fighter is a person that's engaged in a resistance movement against what they believe to be an oppressive or illegitimate government. Southwest, I'm here to tell you today that the devil has an oppressive and illegitimate government. For Paul declares in Ephesians chapter number 2, Verses 1 and 2, and you he has made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. The devil has an illegitimate, oppressive government. The devil has a system. <laughs> But God has some chosen vessels to be people that's going to be engaged in a resistant movement against this oppressive and illegitimate government. If you don't believe we should be in a resistant movement, 
Read James 4 and 7 when he says, submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. I told you we got a, we're, we're in a resistant movement. So let me to tell you that Jesus came to set us free. But we have to fight in this spiritual war to maintain our freedom. With all that said, this brings me to my title this morning, which is simply entitled, The Freedom Fighters. Church, whether y'all know it or not, God has placed us here to be freedom fighters. We are in a spiritual war and we have to fight for our freedom every moment of our lives. Like I said, a freedom fighter is a person engaged in a resistant movement against what they believe to be an oppressive and illegitimate government. So the text for our consideration this morning revolves around the mission of the Messiah. And Luke the physician provides a list of those things that Jesus wanted to accomplish. Now although every item on this list is important, I want to highlight one part of the mission that coincides with the theme and it coincides with this holiday weekend. But let's take a close look at verse number 18 and use that as the foundational brick on which we're going to build this sermonic castle. Verse 18, the beginning of that states, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, we all know that Jesus is 100% man, was 100% man, and was 100% God. Jesus was 100% divinity, and 100% human. When you consider everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus did was not accomplished with the God in him. Jesus did a lot of things with the man in him. Some of us use that as an excuse. Oh, that's Jesus. That's why he did it. A lot of stuff Jesus did was from the man in him. Because if everything was done with the God in him, how could that be an example to us? Jesus was a spirit-filled man. When you think about his ministry, it all began after the Holy Ghost came upon him after John baptized him in the Jordan River. Matthew chapter 1 speaks of the genealogy and the birth of Jesus. Matthew chapter 2 speaks of the childhood of Jesus. Matthew chapter 3 jumps right into Jesus meeting up with John the Baptist. And Matthew chapter 4, we see the spirit of the Lord leading Jesus into the, uh, into the desert. And after that, he began his ministry. His ministry began after the Spirit of God came upon him. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Church, that's good news. Because we're commanded to have the Spirit in us. Ephesians 5 and 18 says, do not walk, uh, do not be filled with uh, wine, but be filled with the Spirit. The more Spirit-filled Christians in the church, the more can be accomplished. Listen, when you are filled with the Spirit of God, you are a freedom fighter. Your mind is set on the Savior and not on self. Your mind is set on the Savior and not on sin. Your mind is set on the Savior and not on circumstances. Your mind is set on the Savior and not on your situation. Your mind is set free from the bondage of this oppressive world that we live in. Church, many of us are slaves to our circumstances. Slaves to our situation. And Jesus is saying, I set you free and he wants you to be filled with the Spirit so you can free your mind. Free your mind. When you are filled with the Spirit, you are part of a resistance movement that the devil can't handle. Think about this thought for a minute. Eternity is impacted when we allow the Spirit of God to take complete control of our lives. Think about that. You impact eternity when you're filled with the Spirit. If you want to be like Christ, then, then empty self and fill up with Jesus. The B clause of the text says, the Spirit has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Jesus came to preach good news to the destitute, 
to the homeless, to the no money, no food stamp, no SNAP, no Social Security, no Section 8, no WIC, no service type of folk that were downtrodden. That's who Jesus came to talk to. Church, let me say this. Poor people need some good news. Amen. They need some good news. Amen, Amen y'all. The only news they're getting right now is that the little bit of services they have is about to get cut. Amen. Folk need some good news. Amen. Folk need to hear about this man named Jesus. Amen. They need to hear about the man that can provide endless services. Yeah. They need to hear about the man who can provide joy when money is scarce. Who can provide peace of mind when your stomachs are growling. Who can provide serenity when bill collectors are calling. Who can provide hope for the hopeless. If a poor and hungry and homeless man if is filled with the spirit of Jesus Christ, then, 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 then uh, his mind is free. A poor man that's hungry, that's filled with the spirit of Christ, lacks nothing. And his mind is free. But there are folk walking around here right now with money doing all right, but they're slaves. Walking around here with stuff, but slaves. Slaves to their jobs, slaves to their schedules, slaves to other people, slaves to society, slaves to wanting more and more, slaves to selfish ambition, slaves to selfish desire, slaves to the liquor bottle, slaves to cigarettes, slaves to four letter words, slaves to sin. Their minds are not free. Minds are not free. Church, we need Jesus to help us free ourselves from sex. Amen. We are our worst enemy. It's called self-enslavement. Let us not be ashamed or think we're too good to give poor people some good news. And in order to give them good news, that means we got to go to where they are. We can't expect them to always come to the church. Even though we're in a good location, right on our main strip, we got to go to where they are. And you know what? Just let me say this, though. I want to commend the Southwest family for your sincere service over the past years. Because we have made several attempts to help folk out. We have given several turkey drives during Thanksgiving for the less fortunate. Given out school supplies to the children in this community. Served at a homeless shelter on Christmas Day when y'all could have been at home with y'all families and you made that sacrifice. We're conducting another health fair on, J on July 15th, right next door, to provide services for this community. And all of the behind the scenes benevolence that y'all don't even know about. Thank y'all for all of your service. And let's continue to help those that are in need. And speaking of the health fair, just want to drop this by. We're asking for $20 for every working member. Even if you're getting Social Security, disability, retirement pension, if you get a wage of any kind, we're asking for $20 per person because what we want to do is give a gift card to people at the health fair. We want to give them a gift card to either Walmart, Stop and Shop, or whatever the case may be. Now, think about this. Those of you that, earn, that are earning some kind of wage right now, if somebody gave you a $20 gift card to Walmart, you'd be about as giddy as you could be. I know I would be, and I get a wage. And I would be excited. But for someone that makes less than half than you, someone that doesn't make anything, just think of how much joy you could bring to a person with a $20 gift card. They need it more than you do. So at the end of the service, a sister Parker gonna be in the back, give her $20, please. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Jesus loved the poor. And so should we. Now listen, then he says, Jesus says he came to proclaim liberty. Here's our foundational text. To proclaim liberty, freedom, to the captives. See, the gospel imparts favor. It doesn't literally open doors of the prison, but it releases the mind that is captive under sin. Captive under oppression. Captive under personal circumstances. The gospel breaks the chains of slavery. Amen. Jesus came to set our minds free. But you know what? Some people have been set free, but they prefer slavery. 
Oh, preacher, what are you talking about, man? Nobody don't want to be a slave. Everybody wants to be free. Let me try to paint a picture. When the Emancipation Proclamation was signed and the slaves were set free, although some were physically set free, many of them still had a slave mentality. Their masters provided food, clothes, and shelter, and they had a structured day. And for some of the freed slaves, they had a hard time making it on their own. They were dependent on their former way of life for survival. They were physically free, but mentally slaves. Think about when Moses was leading Israel out of Egyptian bondage, and they were traveling around the desert for all those years, and the Israelites had the nerve, the audacity to say, Moses, you should have left us back in Egypt. We had cucumbers and leeks and, and onions and peppers and, and, and all this good food. And you got us out here in the desert. I'm tired of eating manna and quail. You should have left us in Egypt. Instead of being free, they still wanted to be slaves. There are so many things that we are chained to. So many things, church, that some of us are shackled to. Think about the things that some of us do that we should not be doing. Think about some of the things that we should be doing that we're not doing. Some of us are slaves. Think about all of the addictions that exist today. Drug addictions and non-drug addictions. Some folk are hooked on opiate addiction, alcohol addiction, sex addiction, addiction, gambling addiction, internet addiction, video addiction, Plastic surgery addiction. Shopping addiction. Did I get down your street yet? There's a whole bunch of addictions out there. Plastic, yes, yeah, plastic surgery. Yeah, some of y'all got problem with y'all plastic. Chain, chain. At the mall. <laughs> Think about some of the impurities we put in our bodies on a daily basis. Yes, some of us are slaves to food. Some are addicted to greasy food, fast food. Junk food, processed food, fatty food, unhealthy food. When the spirit of the Lord is upon you, your mind could allow you to do some amazing things. You can resist all of those addictions and live a healthy life, mind, body, and spirit. Now that's what I call maximizing an abundant life. That's maximize. I mean, when you feel good yes. physically, yes. when you feel good spiritually, yes. when you feel good mentally, yes. when you feel good, when your mind is free, yes. it's, it's, it, it's crawling up there sometimes. Yes. And we got to release that stuff. Yes. Jesus has set us free, but some still have the slave mentality. Listen, Thomas Jefferson said, I prefer a dangerous freedom over a peaceful slavery. Amen. Let me let that sit there for a minute Amen. and marinate. Amen. Some have been in mental enslavement for so long that they're comfortable. Right. I, I, I like it like this. But how can we let this mind be in us? How can we let this mind be in us that's in Christ Jesus? Right. When, when, when our mind is filled with so much stuff, why do you think of so many passages in the Bible where Jesus said, you know, I'll, I'll be with you all the time. Um, don't worry about a thing. Don't worry. Don't be anxious for nothing. Be of good cheer. We can't, we can't have those scriptures applied to our lives if we have mental enslavement. So that's why we got to be freedom fighters. In order to live right, we got to fight right. Amen. 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 Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 8 real quick. Let's take a look at something. Romans chapter 8, first couple of verses. I want us to see how blessed we are. And I hope this will motivate us to fight even harder for our freedom. Because mental enslavement is a horrible thing. Gotta free our minds, y'all. Free our minds. You can do so much more with a free mind. So Paul wrote this letter to the church of Christ in Rome. Trying to encourage the, the brethren down there. And so in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, what does he say, my brother? There is therefore now no condem condemnation. All right, stop right there for a minute. There is therefore 
Now, no condemnation. Condemnation is a sentence that has been passed. It's a decision. It is a verdict resulting in an investigation. Now, God searches us thoroughly. God investigates us thoroughly. And if it was not for his grace, he could not have inspired Paul to write, there's no condemnation. Because after God searches us, investigates us, really and truly, the verdict should be guilty for all of us. But now, there is no condemnation. Now, it's this for everybody. Read. To them which are in Jesus Christ Jesus. All right, hold on a second. Uh-oh. This blessing is only for those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, preacher, how do you get in Christ Jesus? You hear his word. You believe his word. You repent of your sins, change your life around, confess Jesus is the Son of God, and you become baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and you arise out of the water and walk in the newness of life. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27 says, those of you that have put on Christ, I baptized in the Christ, put on Christ. So when you put on Christ, you are in Christ. Amen. The text says those that are in Christ have no condemnation. Amen. Now, for those of us that are in Christ, is this blessing for everybody. Keep reading. He's about to narrow this thing down. Who walk not after the flesh, uh -huh. but after the spirit. Now, not only do you have to be in Christ, you cannot be walking with the flesh. To get this blessing. See how the, the text just nailed this thing down. It's only for those who do not walk according to the flesh, but those that walk according to the spirit. Amen. Church, we must, every day of our lives, walk circumspectly. Yes. Amen. Keep reading, brother. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus uh -huh. has made me free yes. from the law of sin and death. See, see what happens? In Christ, I'm free from sin and death. Oh, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? We are set free from the law of sin and death, that the law that separates us from God. I'm free from that now. Now, listen to this. Rather than our sin condemning us, God now condemns our sins. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Drop down to verse 3. Y'all still in Romans? Read verse 3 now. For what the law could not do. Now, the law couldn't do all of this. Read in that it was weak through the flesh. It was too weak through the flesh. Keep reading. God sending his own son. God sent Jesus. In the likeness of sinful flesh. Took upon all of our sins. Read. And for sin. Uh-huh. Condemned sin. Condemned sin. In the flesh. In the flesh. We are not condemned by ourselves. Oh, that's a shocking moment right there. God condemns our sins instead of condemning us for our sins. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. I need to say amen right there. The glorious truth is that by faith we are set free from the bondage of our past sins and the sins we are going to commit. Amen. Yep, yep, yep. Before the day is over, yep, Brother Jones will do something he ain't got no business doing. <laughs> yep, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm going to think something, say something, do something that I ain't got no business thinking, saying, or doing. And I'm thankful to God that I've been set free. Trying to walk in the spirit, that's, this is a tough fight, y'all. Fighting for our freedom. Yeah. But I just got to keep fighting on. And then when I recognize I messed up, oh, Lord, please forgive me. I'm going to try hard. Yeah. Freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. Now listen. This freedom does not give us the freedom to live like we want to live because there's no condemnation. The Christians in Rome got it twisted and Paul had to let it be known. He said in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 1, he said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? See, the Christians at Rome thought that on the grounds of freedom from sin, that they should engage in sin so grace will keep increasing. Paul had to warn them because of their erroneous conclusion which will lead them back to death, back to slavery. We ought to be thankful that Jesus 
is the ultimate freedom fighter. Amen? Amen. And he set us free from the curse of our past and future sins. Amen. Amen. Aren't you just glad that Jesus came to justify? Amen. Aren't you glad that Christ came to conquer? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Savior came to save? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Redeemer came to rescue? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord came to give life? Aren't you glad that the Son came to sanctify? Amen. Aren't you glad that Emmanuel came to emancipate? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Father fought for freedom? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lamb came to liberate? Amen. 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 I'm talking about being a freedom fighter. Yes. Fighting for my freedom every day. Turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. We got to fight with all our might to maintain this freedom. Because let me tell you something. Freedom ain't free. It ain't free. It costs Jesus something. It's going to cost us something. No, 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 let me rephrase that. Freedom is free, but it'll cost you everything. How y'all like that one? <laughs> y'all go home and figure that one out. Galatians chapter 5. In verse number one. Because see, you got to give in order to get. Doing your own thing just going to result in self enslavement. So, Brother Coley, what does it say in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number one? Stand fast, see, therefore. Stand fast, therefore, what? In the liberty of In the liberty. liberty. Hold on, my brother. Stand fast. Fight. What you think the text is saying? Fight. Stand fast. Fight. For the liberty. Fight for your freedom. Read. Wherewith Christ hath made us free. By which Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again. Don't you dare get entangled with what? With the yoke of bondage. With the yoke of bondage. See, see, sister, don't follow me over here. Come on, Facebook. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. A yoke is referred to as something that connects two things together. Jesus is using this uh, phraseology because during those days, farmers used a yoke to, to yoke two oxen together or two mules together that was plowing the land. They were in sync with one another and they was moving along and they were connected. The text is telling us not to be entangled again because we used to be entangled in some stuff. We used to be yoked to some stuff. And he's saying, don't be yoked again. Don't go back to your former way of life. Don't go back to self-enslavement. Stand fast. Fight for your freedom. And don't you dare go back to that form of life again. You've been cleansed from that. And don't you go back in there again. Stop having slave mentality. That's why Paul says in our text, stand fast by the liberty that made us free. Now, the tragedy of Christianity is that many folk are yoked to some other stuff other than Jesus. See, if we want freedom, we got to be yoked to the service of God. You got to be yoked to the service of God. Yoked to the work of the Lord. Therefore, we must stand fast. Yoked to submission. Yoked to humility. Therefore, we must stand fast. Yoked to his word. Yoked to the fellowship of the saints. Therefore, we must stand fast. Yoked to his love. Therefore, possessing an attitude of servitude. Freedom ain't free. You got to give something. Got to give up your time. Give of yourself, give of your husband, give of your wife, give of your kids, give of your resources, give of your money, give of everything you have for Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't you know that the best thing in life is free? Best thing in life. Somebody said the best things in life are free. Plural. But I read in John 8 and 32 that you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The best thing in life is free. Singular. The truth. Because it's the truth that's going to make you free. Amen. It's a simple formula. No truth, no freedom. Well, see, 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 this thing is all packaged up together. You got to be willing to accept truth to have freedom. Amen. And that's the problem with the world. Folk don't really want to accept truth. Uh, yeah. Jack Nicholson set the Tom Cruise and a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Or was it the other way around? The Tom said to Jack, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Tom said it to Jack, y'all know what I'm talking about. Can't handle the truth. It's one of the biggest problems today. It's the lack of truth in this world. I don't folk tell the truth, man. Amen. Amen. Folk be lying. 
Then you give them the truth. They want to twist it, turn it, don't want to accept it. And having been free from sin, you'll become slaves of righteousness, Romans 6, 18. See, being, mean, being made free from sin does not, long, does not mean that we no longer have a sinful nature. The text refers to freedom from sin as the dominating power in your life. Y'all get that? Now, as servants or slaves of righteousness, we can walk right. We can talk right. Sing right. Love right. Serve right. Praise right. Think right. Give right. Because I'm all right. My mind is free. Praise the Lord we've been liberated. And I'm grateful that we have been set free. Now, there are a lot of people that are recorded in the scripture that had a problem with the truth. And as a result of that, they had no freedom. The same Hebrew court could not handle the truth. That's why they killed Stephen. Felix couldn't handle the truth. That's why he told Paul to just go away. King Agrippa couldn't handle the truth. That's why he said, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Jesus said to the disciples, if you eat of my, 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 my flesh and drink of my blood, then you can have eternal life. Some of them left Jesus. They couldn't handle the truth. John the Baptist told King Herod, man, you cannot have your brother's wife. Couldn't handle the truth and they chopped off John the Baptist's head. There are folk right now today that don't like Brother Jones because of the truth. Yes, there's a lot of folk that don't like me, y'all. Because of the truth, but that's all right. If they treated Paul and Peter and Jesus like, who am I? The world nailed Jesus to the cross because they couldn't handle the truth. But what about you this morning? Can we really and truly, I mean really, pull back the layers and say we can handle the truth? Seriously. If we are disciples indeed, we must be able to handle the truth. If you want true emancipation, you must be able to handle the truth. If the truth says transform your life, then handle it. If the truth says make the Prince of Peace the number one priority in your life, then handle the truth. Amen. If the truth says I can do all things without complaining, handle it. If the truth says do not forsake the assembly and show up to every class and every worship service, then handle it. If the truth says be faithful unto death, then handle it. Amen. Pull back the layers and see if you can really handle the truth. Yes. Because if not, there's no freedom. You're just a slave. Yes. The truth will cut. The truth will sting. The truth will rebuke. The truth will correct. And sometimes the truth hurts. But the truth brings freedom. So when the truth is presented, don't get ticked, get pricked. Amen. Amen. So this morning I want to close with this illustration. In the days of slavery, some slaves were fortunate enough to buy their freedom. They earned enough money, went to the master, and said, Master, you said it cost this much for me to gain my freedom. I've earned enough freedom. Can I please have my freedom papers for me and my family? Master comes the money. He gives them and his family their freedom papers. Now, as this family goes along living a free life, someone could come along and say, hey, who is your master? And then that family would say, we're free. We bought our freedom. Then they would say, well, how do I know that you have freedom papers? Y'all look like a bunch of runaway slaves. Well, no, sir. Here's my freedom papers right here. Let me see those freedom papers. That individual could take those papers, look at it, read it. It's legitimate. Look at that family. Says, I don't care nothing about you or these freedom papers. And rip them up and burn them right in front of them. And take that family as slaves took their freedom papers and made them go back to slavery and chances are, you're living an even more harsh life than before. 
Now, those of us that were baptized into Christ, we were handed some spiritual freedom papers. But somebody by the name of Lucifer came along and took somebody's freedom papers and brought them back into slavery. Unlike the slaves of old, they couldn't do nothing about it. But thank God, through the Holy Spirit, we can do something about it. We can purpose in our hearts and conclude in our mind that with the power of the Holy Ghost, we are freedom fighters, and we can say, Lucifer, give me back my freedom because I'm a freedom fighter. Lucifer, give me back my joy. Give me back my peace. You old devil, give me back my sanity. Give me back my mind. Give me back my strength. One day, Jesus died on the cross, went down into the Hadean world, whooped the devil's behind, took his keys, arose with all power in his hand, and now I can say, Lucifer, give me back my life. Give me back my life. Freedom fighters. Give me back my life. Somebody say, I am. I am. A freedom fighter. A freedom fighter. I, am. I am. A freedom fighter. A freedom fighter. The Declaration of Independence for the Child of God happened over 2,000 years ago at a place called Calvary. Not 1776 on July 4th. No. Our independence, our freedom took place on Calvary. Jesus fought hard and long for our freedom. And he expects us to fight hard and long to maintain our freedom. Don't you want to be emancipated today? Church, some of us are walking around here with so much stuff on our minds. I know you have financial issues. I know you have health issues. I know you have marital issues. I know you have family issues. I know you got issues on your job. I know there's stuff going on in your life. God knows you got stuff going on in your life. But he said, bring it all to Jesus. Bring it all to the feet of Jesus. And just leave it there. Free your mind. We all got stuff that we need to be free from. It's going to take time. It's going to take prayer. It's going to take the gift of the Holy Spirit for us to come out of this slavery. Because see, what happens is our minds get so clouded with stuff, we can't focus on kingdom business. We can't focus on what's really important. We're trying to go from earth to glory, but Satan is saying, let me keep filling you up with issues. Because I know you can't deal with it. Oh, you think you got rid of that one? Let me give you this one. Because we know when it rains, it pours. One problem going, here come another one. Sometimes stuff just keep piling up. I ain't even got rid of the last five problems. Here come five, ten more. But God is able. Amen. God is able to set you free. Do you believe that, though? It's going to take a serious mental process daily for us to get to the point where our minds are truly free. Where we can break the bonds of enslavement. Where we can stop allowing self to be in the way of getting us to glory. We have to be freedom fighters every moment of our lives. Now, there's just so much more than Jesus, to Jesus that meets the eye. Jesus is more than just a man that was born in a manger and died on the cross. He is our risen Lord that sits on the right hand side of God and he loves you. He has all power in heaven and earth. Tap into the power and free your mind. Ain't nobody worth clouding my head up where to the point where I'm stressed out Got all this anxiety. Ain't nothing or nobody worth my health depleting because of somebody or something. Because I'm here to have an abundant life and ain't nobody messing with that. We got to resolve that in our hearts and minds. That yes, I got these issues. Lord knows I got some issues. But you know, I'm going to pray on it and leave it alone. Especially the stuff that we can't control. Because I'm a freedom fighter. And I'm fighting to be free. I love peace. I love it to be nice up here. I do. I just like it when up here is just like easy like Sunday morning. But I got to fight for Sunday morning. If you're here today and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, you need to be one. Jesus died so he can set you free. 
So come to me. This is an opportunity for the American Independence Day to be your spiritual independence day today. By hearing his word, believing it, confessing, repenting, and being baptized today for the forgiveness of your sins. You don't have to wait around for some ecclesiastic council to vote you in. You don't have to take some 13-week course uh, before you can be baptized. You don't have to tarry for the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, they was in Jerusalem when they did that anyway. We're not going to send you to Jerusalem to wait for the Spirit. There is a sense of urgency. The folk in the book of Acts that were baptized got baptized right on the spot. You can be saved today. We're going to stand. We're going to sing a song in a minute. And if you want to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, all you got to do is come down these aisles and give me your hand and give God your heart. Amen. Now, if you are a member of the church and, 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 and you have been enslaved by things, God knows. God loves you. He is a long-suffering God. He knows what you're going through. But he don't want you to keep living like that. No test, no testimony. We got to go through some stuff so we can get stronger. So if you're a member of the church and you've been harboring some stuff and, and you've been, uh, uh, you're have been guilty of self-enslavement, come back to the Lord and ask for prayer. And I'm going to tell you right now, church, I need y'all to pray for Brother John. Like, that's a lot going on. Working a full-time job, having a family, being a husband, trying to oversee the flock, being a community, stuff, stuff. Amen. On top of stuff, on top of stuff, and the stuff that y'all don't know about my stuff. Amen. And something. Stuff, stuff. Hmm? Pray for the preacher. I need it. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't no Superman. I need prayer. I have my weak moments too. So pray for a brother. Let's pray for one another, and let's all strive to be freedom. Let us all stand and let us have a song. Pass me my old gentle Savior and will hear my humble cry. While on others thou art called. recipients of God's word once again. Every time we sit at the feet of a brother teaching God's word, every time we sit at the feet of somebody presenting God's word is a blessing. And let us not take that for granted. We have some outstanding, and we'll start with Sister Holly I'd like to thank you guys for praying for me with my um, ongoing knee conditions. Um, the test for the knee allergies came back negative, so I guess that's a good thing. But um, just keep me in prayer as they try to figure out what's going on. Amen. Amen. Sister Shadrick Bright. Um, good morning, um, church. Please pray for Sister Janessa. She's not feeling well. And please also pray for Kiki and her family. She's not feeling well either. And Kiki's father was murdered this weekend. So please keep them in prayer. She um, texted me today and asked to keep her in prayer her family. So I know she's been going through a lot of loss in the last year or so. It's been a lot. Just keep her in prayer. Amen. Um, Sister Ophelia Jack. Thank you so much. Good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for the young for that message. It's been, it, it's been, it, it touched me because I've been going through this for a couple of years and I've neglected you know, I neglect the church, I neglect doing what God will is for me, and I forgot many a time where does my help and my strength come from, and um, that he will help and see our family through many things, and I've been overworked, over, 
work myself, not seeing families, not being able to do anything at church. And, you know, this month I've decided I'm going to just let it go, let go on and just trust God that with what we have, we will make do with it and to live within our means and just remember He is where my help comes from. So I am so thankful and I apologize to everyone that for not being there for anyone and um, just keep praying for me and my family because it is a struggle when tensions come and you're wondering where you know, stuff is going to, how it's going to happen, how it's going to work out and we do forget that it's God stand still and pray and let it work. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Amanda Jones. Brother Jones, thank you so much for that message. It's, you know, because freedom is in the mind. And, and how we think and, and, and how we move through this world, our minds are in, in control of that. So thank you so much for that message. Um, just to um, add to what Sister Shandra said, it was an anniversary of um, Kiki's father's death. So keep them in prayer because when the anniversary comes, it's a struggle, you know, to go back in that remembrance of what happened during that time frame. So just keep her lifted up in prayer. Um, as mother said, keep our girls lifted up as well as they're, you know, out in California. And um, as a mom, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes when your children are away from you, but it's a blessing to know that you've been able to raise them up so that they can be independent. Um, also, I'd like for you to keep us in prayer, my sisters and my mother and I, we want to be going on a trip uh, together um, for a couple of days. I want to thank you again for tuning in to the Southwest Church of Christ YouTube channel. I pray that this message has caused you to make some changes in your lives. If you have any questions regarding the message, feel free to give us a call at any time or feel free to send us an email and we'll be glad to give you a Bible answer to your Bible question. Thanks again for tuning in and may the Lord bless you in a very special way.